hey everyone welcome back to my channel it's your girl Mercy Earth so I'm right in the middle of Stockholm at a place called Drottinggatan I know you're wondering what is that basically Gatan means street Drotting means queen that is in Swedish so Drottinggatan basically means the Queen's Street now there's something special about this street if you go very straight downside you head towards the downtown which is usually known as the Gamlastan in Swedish and when you go up the hill straight you find your way towards the observatory heights basically it's a place within the Stockholm city whereby you can stand and you have an aerial view of the Stockholm city now apart from that uh, it's a very very busy street especially on a Saturday like this and today being a very beautiful day with a nice weather I thought why not let me just take a walk take me with you so that you have an experience of how spring looks like now the good thing is uh, most people are outdoors because it's a very nice weather today the weather is um, 18 degrees Celsius you can find that that's totally the opposite of what was happening during winter because uh, people used to freeze out so much but then today it's really warm uh, you'll find most people with shorts and uh, basically just enjoying the sun as I'm walking around I'm sure you've also noticed a very nice lovely architectural designs as I told you earlier on uh, Sweden is one of the countries in Europe which has really really tried to preserve its old buildings you know in most cases they don't demolish buildings if there is a let's say an old building that is getting dilapidated in most cases uh, the Swedish government usually prefers restoring it or rather renovating it and apart from that you'll find that the old buildings are usually renovated in such a way that they are in harmony with the new or the current uh, buildings now apart from that uh, I just saw something interesting let me try and see what we can see right here it's a nice nice small little garden uh, I'm interested to show you around uh, so basically just follow me let's try to explore as usual they say if you don't know a place just follow the lead trust your gut and I mean what's the worst that can happen if I get lost I will ask around so now uh, you can see it's springtime and uh, during spring you find that uh, we just came from the crazy crazy cold winter so most of the leaves have uh, blossomed we have different beautiful flowers around and as usual it's usually full of fresh air so now um, there's something else I've also noticed about Sweden is the emphasis towards preservation of nature in almost each and every section whether it's an estate a residential area Sweden tries tries so much to, to preserve nature and I can say many people or rather the majority of the Swedes and let me say the whole population as a whole tries its best to preserve nature and it's something that is very evident you know is one of the areas you just step out of an apartment you find a green area you step out of an apartment you find a park and I think that's something that's very beautiful so if you've never been to Sweden the moment you step in the country you will totally totally feel some refreshment it's very soothing I know some countries may say otherwise but to be honest I've, I've traveled to other countries but I must say that Sweden is full of fresh air full of nature and it's not just that the nature is well kept well preserved and people really respect that you know yeah so um, it's beautiful here and I think I find this fish to be very 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 beautiful you know so enough of this uh, let me see if I can uh, find my way back to the street that is the Drotten Gotten Street I want to see if I can take myself to the observatory heights and we see what we can see from there something else I need to emphasize is that it's not just about the nature in terms of the trees flowers the you know the water bodies we're talking about also cleanliness I can tell you Stockholm is one of the most clean cities we have in Europe you know I, I'm not saying this because I'm trying to sugarcoat or maybe I'm a new person here trying to paint a positive picture basically Stockholm is very clean and each and every place you walk around you'll always find dustbins and uh, 
if in case there's litter or garbage you need to throw away there's always some place there's always a dustbin or a trash can to just um, litter you know uh, when it comes to people around it's the same thing people try the best to maintain cleanliness and it's very evident on the streets and uh, trust me in in case you think otherwise just comment on the comments below i mean in case you've been to sweden let me know what you think about the place but so far i must say it's very clean and the majority of the people here respect that there's a lot of cleanliness and it's not just in the, in the streets we're talking about the estates you're talking about um residential areas you're talking about uh, you know work areas that i don't know how to really define that but Sweden is very clean and I think it's something I really respect. Of course we have some areas that are not really observing a lot of cleanliness but when you when you put it on a scale of 1 to 10 as compared to what is considered to be dirty I can say it's let's say 3. And in most cases you find that there's usually the commune a uh, service which will always come and clean it up and uh, things like that. Now uh right now I'm um, at a church I cannot go in so far. I think either there's a ceremony or, um, well, I've, I've not planned to go there. But I'm at the compound of the church, and uh, something you'll notice about uh, the churches here in Sweden is that around the compound you'll find cemeteries. And I was asking around, uh, why why were they burying people near, or rather in the compound for the churches? In most cases you'll find that uh, the, maybe it was a political leader, it was someone famous, uh, people who lived back then who were considered to be really, really important in the society in most cases were buried in the church compound. And I think we can see on my right side, we have some of the gravestones. Uh, I know some people may fear this, but trust me, for me, <laughs> I, I have a very special attachment to the dead. Uh, reason being, uh, I lost my mother back in 2019. And uh, the moment I lost my mother, I think I totally changed my whole concept on... Uh, issues concerning the dead. I, I no longer fear things about death. I don't fear graves. I don't fear dead people. Basically, my mother is dead. So I, I got a chance at least of look, just looking around, looking at the gra graveyards, looking at the stones, reading about the history of the people who are buried here. And you'll be amazed. We have people who are really founders of big uh, companies. We have people who are innovators. And uh, if you read history, Keenly, you notice that Sweden really had one of the most legendary people or rather innovators in the world. So, well, enough of that. Some people may find this boring, but basically this is the compound of the church. Um, you can see that's one of the stones there. Uh, there is a, a leader here who was, bu was buried there. Well, I didn't get a chance to really walk there and see the plaque because it's been, um, how do you call it? It's actually been put in a way that you cannot just walk through, not unless you seek permission. But well, I found this church to be really, really nice in terms of the architectural design, in terms of the whole artistic spectrum. As you all know, I come from an artistic background. I'm an artist. Uh, maybe one or two videos which are upcoming, I might find a chance of showing you what I do in terms of art. Well, I'm back to the streets and uh, not on the dot in Gotten. It's... Um, on the back side, uh, it's like uh, an adjacent street of the Drottengotten. I want to find my way, as I told you earlier on, up towards the observatory heights. So right here, I was just admiring this architectural building. And you have to realize that also the architectural buildings form part of art. As you all know, my channel is art. I'm sure some people wonder, why do you call yourself artist, yet uh, we've never seen your art? So anything that catches your eye, anything that's pleasing to your eye, and uh, architecture is one of uh, forms of art in the world. So, well, bear with me and just appreciate. So let's go. And I hope you enjoy. In case you have any question, uh, feel free to comment right below. In case you find something um, interesting, in case you have views, opinions, let me know. Something interesting you can see right here, there are some lions. They are in form of a cement kind of sculpture. I'm sure you're wondering why. It's the same thing I notice in most of the centers in Stockholm, you'll always find lions around. I asked the reason why lions and not any other animal. I was told it's simply because lions actually are the symbol, especially on the coat of arms 
when you look at the coat of, coat of arms in, of Sweden, you'll notice that lion, the lion is the animal that is there. And that's the reason why the lions are used. And um, I think uh, when I walk around, I'll try my best to also capture as many different sculptures as possible because I've come to realize also there is a lot of discipline in terms of planning and building here in Stockholm, not only in the center, but also around. There's a lot of thought about the area that will be for the park, the area that the building is supposed to be. Uh, there's a lot of consideration. Everything is just in harmony. I cannot say it's perfect, but I can say that this is one country that puts into, um, how do I put it? It's one country that puts a lot of emphasis in planning. Nothing is just built aimlessly. There's a lot of planning in terms of um, that. Yeah, great. As usual, very interesting sculpture right here. I don't know who this is, but I think it's a very interesting one. Uh, there's also very nice, uh, interesting inscriptions around it. I think I'll come by and uh, check it out later. As you can see, I think I told you earlier on, there's lots and lots of bees. You can see around just 500, 500 meters away and you'll always find a dustbin. Uh, just in case you have uh, something you're eating, you need to throw away the garbage. So basically, I think it's one way in which um, Sweden as a whole has tried to maintain cleanliness. Uh, because, you know, sometimes a country can want to maintain cleanliness, but the, qu the question is, what are the parameters? Are you uh, allowing people or rather are you providing the different facilities and equipment for them to keep cleanliness, you know? So that's just one of the areas. Now, let's look around what we have here. I think uh, there are some relief sculptures. When I talk about relief, is basically the sculptures that are done, but they're not standing on its own. The one on top there, we call it the sculpture on the round. Then right below on the stone is a relief sculpture. Basically, it's a sculpture, yes, but then it's just uh, protruding on the surface. Great. So now, um, as usual, back to Dottingotten Street, and that's the panoramic view. So we shall be going straight up because I want to see if I can find my way up to the observatory heights. And uh, right there, what I just showed you, that is the sculpture and the green area, is just a small park I discovered. I had actually never been there, by the way. That was my first time there. Same thing to this uh, area. The last time I was here was during winter. Trust me, I did not even want to stop. Reason being, it was too cold. I was shivering. It was very hard to film. You can imagine a scenario whereby you remove your phone and it becomes just so hard to film. And also, during winter, you couldn't really notice some of these parks and green areas and nice little gardens because everything was gray and covered in snow. So pretty much everything was just white and gray, white and gray. It was very hard to appreciate this. Well, it was beautiful in its own way, but then um, I must say spring has really, really brought out the best parts of Sweden as well. And I can say each and every season, I think there's a, I have a feeling each and every place will be looking differently. And I'll try to make point whereby I try to film each and every area because in each and every season, chances are the place may look different. Even though I film this place during winter, trust me, it may look different from when I film it during spring, maybe during autumn, it will be all in gold and red, you know. When I film it again back during winter, it will be totally different from spring, summer, etc. Now, it is springtime, yes, but I think uh, all of us are smelling summer because it's been too hot. And when I say too hot, I'm talking about 17 degrees, 18 degrees, 19 degrees. I'm sure some friends of mine from Africa, and especially Kenya, will disagree with me because back in Kenya, you know, at 17 or 16 degrees, that's when it's raining probably in July and everyone is feeling super cold trying to run away around with boots and um, scarves and claiming how it's a cold season <laughs> the moment you come here trust me you'll have a different definition of the term cold anyway not to scare you but just to bring a whole uh, different uh, perspective of what we define cold to be because um, what I call hot here back in Kenya people say it's cold you know because when I go to Kenya and uh, it's 17 degrees and everyone is freezing in quotes, trust me, I'm enjoying because the weather is fantastic. It's hot. I'm enjoying the sun. 
soaking in all the vitamin D's. Anyway, moving around, um, I don't know which building this is. I wish I had someone just to tell me which place is this. But unfortunately, I'm just taking a walk all by myself, discovering new places. And more so, as I told you earlier on, just in case I get lost, the much, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Uh, to be denied entry or to be told, oh, you cannot go in there or go back. I mean, that's it's not that's not even the worst that can happen the worst that can happen is you getting lost but we live in a world full of technology i have my google maps it's just a matter of checking my location and finding a place that i identify as i told you in my previous video uh, there is a center or rather uh, yeah it's a center called the saga story center so basically when you get lost you can always just key in the saga story once you get there you can always Find your way to the subway and get a train to your place. I mean, and if that, when worse comes the worst, you can take a bolt. I think um, things are really changing. Times are changing and uh, we live in a society full of knowledge. I think it's amazing. Now, well, on the stairs, you can see, finally, we are right at the observatory heights. As I told you earlier on, these are the heights, or rather it's like a small hill right in the middle of Stockholm that gives you a chance to view Stockholm in an aer aerial view. You may not really see the entire Stockholm because of the trees that are covering, but at least it gives you a chance. Now, for those people who've been to Kenya, I think you visited the KICC, you know. The KICC gives you a chance of looking at Nairobi at a 360 degree angle. Not only that, but the aerial perspective of Nairobi. So it's almost the same concept here. The only difference is this is going to be a small little hill. So it's called the Observatory Heights. In Swedish, I really don't know how to pronounce the word, but anyone who is uh, from Sweden can type in uh, how it's called in Swedish. You will really help. Now, I'm actually sweating right now. So, uh, the stairs are a little bit overwhelming, especially for people like us who are not super, super fit. But, not creating an excuse, we are right here. So, let's see what we can see. So, uh, we'll take uh, maybe some extra steps up and above. Uh, we have a look at uh, how Stockholm looks like from um, the observatory heights. And it's not just that. Um, the only unfortunate thing is that uh, the place is really, really covered with trees. So it may be a challenge, uh, but let's see what we can we can see here. Yeah? It's really tiring. I'm taking a break ah, in terms of talking and walking at the same time. So kindly bear with me. So finally I'm at the topmost part of the heights. Uh, there's a very very nice um, building there. There is a coffee coffee uh, there's a coffee house actually uh, right on the ground floor of that building that I just showed you. I think the last time I was here we, I took some nice 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 coffee with some muffins and uh, let's see I think uh, I'll just walk past the building and I think right from here you can be able to see some roof uh, or rather some different buildings it's just that it's not so clear because um, this whole place has been covered up by the bush uh, the bushes the trees the flowers uh, back then when uh, I visited the place it was winter so all the leaves were down it was very easy for you to just um, observe the area clearly yeah that's the coffee place I was telling you that's is right in front of us I don't know if it's open yes it is open and uh, something else about Sweden, you'll notice that in most of the restaurants, they have a tendency of just putting the chairs outside and people enjoying uh, their coffee while they are out outside, you know, probably on the terrace. And, and I think it's a beautiful thing. Whew. So right here, we are uh, right on top of the heights. And voila, here we go. This is um, one of the areas in which you can actually have a nice aerial view of the Stockholm buildings. 
I think it's really, really amazing. Trust me, the video is not even showing much. Uh, when you're here in real life, trust me, it's overwhelming, breathtaking. It's beautiful, really, really beautiful. And I can say it's, it's just one area you can sit and stand for long periods of time. And I think you can see that the, the Stockholm commune has done it so well. They've put some benches here because some people just come here, read books. Oh, talk about books. I forgot to mention something. Stockholm has a reading culture. The reading culture is just tremendous. I've never seen that in any other part of the world. Well, apart from South Korea. But when it comes to Sweden, people read books. And I'm talking about reading books in buses reading books in trains in pendle togs uh, in the plane uh, it's just one country that has embraced the culture of reading and i'm sure you're wondering how how are the buses and the trains trust me they are very quiet and silent you'll find people reading books and people minding their business so that that's just one of the things you'll discover when you're um, a visitor or rather you're new in sweden putting that aside i think um, it is a beautiful uh, space up here. Uh, I'll just walk around a little bit more and then uh, the rest of the journey I think I may not film because it will be more or less the same thing. So yeah, so just enjoy and uh, stay with me in case you've not subscribed, kindly subscribe. But for now, it's not yet a buy. Just walk with me. Let's enjoy. Let's explore. And in case you've never been to Sweden, here is a chance for you to explore the place virtually. If you've never been to Stockholm, here is a chance for you to explore the place virtually as well. It's not just that, but at least even for people who are not planning to come here, at least you have some knowledge about the place, you know. In case someone talks about Sweden or Stockholm, you have one or two to say about the place, even, even though you've never been to the place. This is the power of social media. This is the power of YouTube. This is the power of videography. Anyway, guys, just enjoy. I think I'm super tired. I'm super exhausted talking and walking at the same time. else I forgot to mention about Sweden is the numerous numerous number of electric cars right in front of us you can see a charging station it's like a charging port for all the electric cars it is not just any car that's a Tesla and it's not one I'm talking about two Teslas charging right in the middle of the street I'm sure it's very normal here to see all this number of cars uh, these different high-end cars and the good thing is not just about electric cars, I'm talking about biogas cars, you know, the hybrid cars. And I think uh, this is one country that has embraced technology on another level. Well, I just had to show you that. Anyway, in the meantime, uh, guys, we're almost coming to the end of the walk. But I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're going to really, really enjoy this video. In case of anything, let me know on the comment section.